Welcome back. In this video, we will cover a tool called WattWeb. And as I mentioned in the previous lecture, we use WattWeb to determine which technologies does a website have. So it's still information gathering, but from a technical aspect. And WattWeb is tool that we already have pre-installed in Linux, and we can run it with the help of a terminal. So let's do it straight away. As usual, make sure that your OWASP virtual machine is running. And all we need to do to run the WattWeb tool is to type WattWeb and then the IP address of the target that we want to scan. In my case, this is 192.168.1.4, which is the IP address of my OWASP virtual machine. If I press enter, since this machine is in my local network, it will take just a few seconds for this command to finish and we do get some information here. As we can see, this is the link that WattWeb tool tried to visit. It got 200 OK code, which means it successfully loaded the page. It discovered the Apache version, which is 2.2.14. If we go right here, we got country, we got email addresses, so it does manage to even get some email addresses out of this page. The HTTP server appears to be running Ubuntu Linux. We get the Apache version once again, and we get the IP address, the jQuery version, the open SSL version, the PHP version, and some other versions as well. As we can see, the target machine is running Python 2.6.5. So this allows us to discover technologies behind a certain website. And what could be our next step is to take perhaps Apache version, Google this version and see whether it has any known vulnerabilities that exist. Now, this is just a regular command with WattWeb. What we can do to discover what else we can do with WattWeb, we can run this command, which is WattWeb dash dash help. Once you type it in, it will give you all of the possible things that you can do with this tool. So we have a bunch of other options that we can use, such as input file, URL prefix, we got the aggression mode, so the aggression level controls the trade-off between speed and stealth and reliability. There are three aggression modes, the stealthy, aggressive and heavy. Now, you can go through this menu if you'd like, this is just a short help menu of the tool. But if you want to know even more about the tool, you can use a command called man, which is shortened for manual. If you type man and then the tool name, it will open the manual for WattWeb. And under the description, we can see WattWeb identifies websites. Its goal is to answer the question, what is that website? WattWeb recognizes web technologies, including content management systems, blogging platforms, statistic analytic packages, JavaScript libraries, and many other things. In the second paragraph, we also got some explanation on the aggression level or on the aggression option that we saw from the help menu. So as it says, WattWeb can be stealthy and fast or thorough but slow. WattWeb supports an aggression level to control the trade-off between speed and reliability. When you visit a website in your browser, the transaction includes many hints of what web technologies are powering that website. And that's exactly what WattWeb does. It enumerates those technologies and it outputs them back to us. Sometimes a single web page visit contains enough information to identify a website, but when it does not, WattWeb can interrogate the website further. And that is where the other aggression levels come. The default level of aggression, called passive, is the fastest and requires only one HTTP request of a website. This is suitable for scanning public websites. Now, this part right here is important. We can use the default aggression level to scan public websites if we'd like. But if we want to use more aggressive levels, as it says right here, more aggressive modes were developed for in penetration tests. So you should not use the aggressive modes on a website that you do not have permission to scan. Okay, awesome. So let's take a look at what else can we run with WattWeb. So let's go back to the help menu. And we do get some examples of usage right here. But what we want to do, as it interests us the most at the moment, is let's try to use aggression level 3. For example, since we used 1 before, which was default, 
let's increase it a little bit and let's move the aggression level to 3. Then we can also type dash V, which stands for verbose, which means it will output even more things. And at the end, let's add the IP address. Oops, we misspelled aggression, so let's add another S and let's let it to run. Okay, the output came once again relatively fast because the target is in my local network, so let's see what else do we have. Straight away we notice much more output than once we ran the command previously and we got it ordered by detected plugins. So we can see the detected plugins, we got Apache first, then comes the description of Apache, we got the version right here and we got the website of Apache as well. So we do get some more information about each of the discovered plugins. Up here we get pretty much the information that we already got from the first scan. And down here we can read more about every plugin that it managed to find. Including email addresses, HTML version, jQuery, OpenSSL, PHP and all of that. And in case there is a plugin that you do not recognize, you can read through the description and figure out what it is used for. Besides of using Wattweb on only one IP address, you can also use Wattweb on multiple IP addresses if you'd like. You can type the same command and for example, let's say you have multiple websites in your local network that you want to scan with one command, you can do so by typing your network range, which in my case is this one, and then it will perform scanning of all of the IP addresses inside of your network. And you can notice that I'm getting a lot of errors right here. These are all the IP addresses that are not hosting any website. As you can see, it tries to visit this IP address over HTTP, but it can't find the route to the host. Therefore, it throws us an error. Now, just so you don't have to see all of these errors, what you can do is you can run the same command and add at the end dash dash no dash errors. This will remove all of these errors so it doesn't get printed out to us. It just simply gives a better output. And here you will get response for every device on your network that has a website hosted. In my case, that should only be our OWASP virtual machine as well as perhaps my router. Let me see, we got the IP address of 192.168.1.4 and down here we got my router's IP address which is 192.168.1.1. Now, of course, with the IP range, let me just go down here, clear the screen. Your IP range might be a completely different one. It doesn't have to be the same one that I have. So make sure that you check that out first and then you can run this command with your IP range. Okay, awesome. And this is what we use the Wattweb tool for. It helped us discover different plugins that a website has. Now, Wattweb can be considered one of the tools that are used for advanced website enumeration because it does give us a lot of information back. However, we are slowly getting closer to ending website enumeration. There are a couple more tools that we want to discuss. Of course, you do not have to use all of these tools. We're just showing different options that you can use. And besides all of the tools that we will cover, there are also a bunch of other tools that you might find useful, so feel free to use any one of them that you like. Now, in the next video, we're going to check out a tool called Derp. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture.